Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with this one, the most recent physique update of Horse MD Marcelo De Angelis at 3 weeks, less than 3 weeks out of the Arnold Classic Ohio and I gotta tell you, he looks insane right now, he looks crazy and I'm telling you, in this pose, inside tricep, because of his legs, he potentially looks better than both Samson and Hari Japan. Now, usually you can choose in side tricep or side chest, you can show your quads. If you use your outer leg, the one that is showing to the camera, and you step on your toe, you're gonna flex your quad and you're gonna have better quad height, but you're not gonna be able to show hamstrings as much as you would if you pressed your legs together and you didn't stand on your toes. In this case, I think Hadi and Samson both are standing on their legs and they're trying to show quads more so than hamstrings. Here's an example of when you wanna show your hamstrings. This is what you do. You lose some quad size, but you show hamstrings. So you need to choose. Horse MD does not. He simply doesn't have to choose. He can do both. I don't know how. Maybe he figured out a way to flex the quad and also press the hamstring, but I don't think that's possible. I think he simply has massive legs, especially from the side. Somehow his shape of his legs it's just so ridiculous that no matter what he does, those legs are gonna look insane. Calves, too, glutes, also separated and big. That lower body, man, that lower body is insane. It's one of the best lower bodies today. I mean, him and Nexila, I guess, right now. And uh, he has details also. He has also depth of the separation. He has conditioning. And no wonder they call him Horse MD. I guess this is the reason, because his legs are just ridiculous. Now, of course, upper body, he can't hang with uh, Samson and Hadi, but potentially he could crack the top three, you know? He could beat Rafael Brandau. I don't think Rafael has this kind of a freak factor, you know? He's an aesthetic guy, very streamlined, he grew some muscle for sure, he's very, very good. Personally, right now, he is my favorite for top three, but this guy can beat him, this guy can beat Rafael Brandau especially if he improved his back double bicep a little. That is a pose that is holding him back big time. You know, he doesn't have the flaring lats. The V taper is non-existent in this one. There is nothing happening in the back. It's all flat. And that's a big issue. You need to have a good V taper. I don't know how much could have he fixed this. Maybe with a better posing. Maybe if he tilted backwards a little. Maybe there are things he could do to change this. I'm sure there are. You guys remember that year when C-Bump changed his back completely, his back double bicep looked like a different bodybuilder and he didn't progress in the back that much, sure he made some progress but it was mainly posing, so if he could figure out what C-Bump did, and I kind of get the idea what he did, he actually, I think he tilted backwards like I said, and I think he would kind of squat a little bit so he would tilt even more, and I think he's pushing the elbows down, flexing the lats, and I think he's also arching the spine quite a lot, so there are some things that I'm sure Horse MD could implement and make that back double bicep better immediately. He just needs to focus on it, you know, practice it, try different things, and I'm sure he would figure it out, because if he shows up with the same back, especially back double bicep, I don't think he's gonna beat Ramon. In that case, he's probably gonna be fourth. Yeah, right now I have him in fourth ahead of James Hollinshead, and take a look at his back lat spread right here, so he's wider than Samson in the back lat spread. I think this back lat spread overall is better than Samson's. Also, his glutes are more shredded. From the front and from the side, I don't think he can hang with Samson or Hadi. As far as the upper body development, he's just not there yet, if you ask me. But like as far as the legs and overall like conditioning and shape and stuff like that, this guy's got it, this guy's really good, I think he's underrated, but we'll see, we'll see how well will he do at the Arnold right now, I have high hopes for this guy, because in this physique update, this just looks insane, this looks sick, this looks like a very, very good top 3 potential, where do you guys think he's gonna land, but just don't tell me out of top 5, I'm pretty sure this guy is in top 5, but I'm not sure where, probably 4th, maybe 3rd in my opinion, whatever you think, tell me down below.
Alright, next up we got a new physique update of Harry Chupan and as you guys know he is in the US so there is no issue with Visa, I don't know if there ever was, but if it was, it's fixed, he's there, we no longer need to worry about that, Harry Chopin is gonna be competing at the Arnold Classic, and this is what he looks like right now, and this is just insane, man, this guy is coming with a redemption, I mean, look at a freaking separation in that chest, how deep that separation is, it's insane, it's crazy, Hadi is just super, super impressive, but I'm not really the biggest fan of his physique, mainly because of those shoulders and arms. You know, they look synthelish, and I don't like that. And also, he's a short guy, he's a 212, former 212 guy. So he's not the biggest guy, and Samson is a 300 pounder. So, in context of open bodybuilding, I think bigger guys should have an advantage. I think that should be a criteria. You know, height and just overall size. I don't think a bodybuilder like Sean Clarida should ever beat Samson Dauda, for example, because I don't care how conditioned Sean is, how grainy, how detailed or whatever, Samson is twice the size, he's literally twice the size of Sean Clarida, so I don't think that should ever happen, and you know, with Hardy, he's obviously not as short as Sean, but again, a 212 guy, when he was an amateur, he competed in the 85 kilo category, I mean, sure, it's kind of awesome to see those giant killers, you know, shorter, smaller guys dominating the open division, but, you know, if it is very close, I believe the size, overall size, should be a criteria, so, personally, right now, from what I saw, I mean, I know how this will be more conditioned and harder, but, you know, it's the Arnold Classic, I think the criteria might be a little bit different, it's Arnold's show, and he's pushing for aesthetics, for size, for height, so I would like to see Samson win this show, but if he doesn't deserve it, if he's not even close to Hardy in terms of hardness and conditioning, then so be it. We'll find out soon enough what that matchup is gonna look like, but right now we got this uh, training video of Hardy, at 3 weeks out, he's Smith Machine squatting 6 plates, and he's going to failure. You can see also in the caption that he was tired from flying and he had a seminar as well for a couple of hours and then he went and he squatted six plates. And I love the drive that Hadi has, but this kind of started a controversy, basically a lot of people are saying that he shouldn't be doing stuff like this at three weeks out. But the argument to that is that James Hollinshead is also doing the same thing and nobody is criticizing him. The thing is, I think six plates is pretty light for James, if it is the first exercise. I mean, of course, it's not light, but James squatted eight plates for, I believe, a couple of reps, so six plates is not that much for him. Also, if you watch James' training videos, he usually does a lot of things before he does the squats, and I don't think he goes this far with his sets. I don't think he goes this far to failure when he's three weeks out and Hadi. He's just going all in, so, you know, maybe this is not the smartest approach, but that's Huddy, that's how he approaches this entire thing, bodybuilding, he always does crazy stuff, he's so driven, he doesn't know to do this any other way, he always goes 100% or not at all, so that's Huddy, that's Huddy for you, and I think he's gonna be just fine, I don't think he's gonna get injured, not right now, I mean, he knows what he's doing, he has a lot of experience, but you know, over time, probably, you know, with wear and tear, someday he's gonna have an injury, probably, unfortunately, I mean, I shouldn't even be talking about it, but, you know, it's realistic, so maybe at this point in his career, maybe he should switch to more safe training, you know, those guys like Ronnie Coleman, like Dorian Yates, they probably could have done the same thing, you know, switch to machines and volume training, they didn't, they didn't know how to, and, you know, they suffered the injuries and they retired, so Hadi, I think it's gonna be the same thing, I don't see this guy ever slowing down until he can go at max speed, he's gonna keep going, and that's just it, that's just Hadi Japan for you guys, and I think this very mindset got him to where he is today. Alright, next we got a little off-season update of the guy with the uh, second best arms in the world right now, in my opinion. But I'm watching this video and honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I'm sure about that. I mean, <laughs> it's very arguable. Maybe his arms are the best in the world right now. It could be, like, those arms are freaking gigantic. Anyways, he's in the off-season right now and it's interesting what he says about his training approach in the off-season. He actually trains his body only once, everybody part once a week in the off-season, but when he's prepping, he does everything twice. 
That's right, every single body part twice a week in the prep. And I know Ronnie Coleman used to do the same thing, but year around. And uh, Chris is doing it only when he's prepping. So it's very interesting. Maybe it's something you guys can uh, try when you're prepping. You know, train everything twice a week, probably with less volume, just divided. I'm currently doing some sort of a push-pull leg type of workout uh, with an emphasis on my upper body. I'm training everything twice a week, but legs only once a week. So it's interesting to hear that Chris has this approach. And right now in the offseason, I mean, he looks really big, really full, and really lean as well. I don't know which show he's gonna do, I'm not sure he announced yet, but he looks really lean right now. Maybe his prep has already started, maybe he's hiding it. Imagine if he jumped into the New York Pro against Nick Walker. That would be really, really cool, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I think Rizzo is most likely gonna do uh, a European show to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, I don't think he's gonna travel to the US twice in a year, but you never know, anything is possible. And I'm gonna leave you off guys with another hilarious clip of Rich Gaspari doing, uh, I would say, an attempt of lunges. First of all, I don't know why is he moving that uh, lag that he's not even using in this exercise, uh, why, why, what is the point of this, he's literally accomplishing nothing, and the range of motion is non-existent, there is no range of motion. This is kind of like a good morning exercise with one leg back and he's barely even, I mean, he's not even doing that. It looks like he's starting to do a good morning. This is not even an attempt of a lunch. I mean, let's be honest. Like, what is the range of motion here? Look at this. Is this guy serious? I don't know why he's doing this. Is he doing this to make us laugh or... I don't know. Is he really training like this? Did he, did he become second best in the world two times in a row training like this? I don't think so. I don't believe so. And is this accomplishing anything right now? Is there any kind of hypertrophy going on right here? <laughs> I really don't think so. I mean, the big question here is why? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing stuff like this? I don't have an answer. It's just really, really weird. But... <laughs> Whatever you guys think is the reason for this, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Thank you guys so much. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.